So today we're going to be focusing on potentiometers. They are everywhere in your house. You've got them in your appliances, they're probably in your oven or uh, microwave, perhaps in your stereo installation, coffee maker, whatever. But today we're going to be looking at how we can implement a potentiometer in the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I want you to know that there are many other options out there. Something that I have on screen here is Arduino Joystick Library. Uh, perhaps MobiFlight is more of a suitable option for you if you want a more simple, easy setup um, and out-of-the-box experience. But I wouldn't be Bits and Droids if I didn't use the Bits and Droids Flight Connector. So that's what we're going to be using in this video. And I put a link on where you can download it in the description down below if you want to read up on it yourself. There are many shapes and sizes of potentiometers, but the most commonly used ones are available, especially in starter kits, are these. They got three pins, a rotating part in the middle, and most of the times on top you can see the amount of resistance that is available inside the potentiometer. Now, how does it work? Well, the potentiometer, if wired up as one, can act like a voltage divider. So if we apply a voltage on one of the pins, so let's say the first one where we're, I've put 5 volts here, we connect it to ground and in the middle there is a little wiper that will slide along a scale of resistance where you can measure the amount of resistance it passed through and it will change the voltage that comes out. Now perhaps it, this sounds a little bit abstract. Now if we open it up it will look something like this. It has a wiper in the middle, the 5 volts pin on the one side and the ground pin on the other. And the blue area in between is a resistant strip. Now, the further the wiper is on the strip, the more resistance is applied. So from the 5 volts to the wiper, this part will be the resistance it has to travel through. Here we get a clear view if we move it a bit to the right, it has to go a little bit further a little bit something like seven and a half K resistance and then this part in the end is what's left and here we see that we've got the 5k so it's somewhere in the middle and it will have to pass through this part of the strip um, changing the amount of resistance applied towards your voltage now because we also have a path to ground it's basically a voltage divider at this point many of you have also seen these ones they are linear potentiometers, but the principle is the same. We just move the handle and it changes the amount of current it has to, of the amount of resistance it has to pass through to get to the pin out. Now sometimes, like this one, they have six pins instead of three. This basically just gives you the opportunity to, to hook up this potentiometer to two components on the other end. May it be your Arduino, perhaps an LED, uh, whatever uh, you need, uh, but they, the pinout stays the same even though it has six. Coding with a potentiometer is actually quite simple as well. It's one of the most easier components to use, in my opinion, um, so we're going to have a quick look. I already uh, whipped up some small code examples so we can um, see some use cases and how it works behind the hood. Okay, so first of all, I've made a simple sketch that defined the pin of the potentiometer. In this case, it's going to be A0. Um, I'm started a serial communication, defined it as an input, and I'm going to say new value is analog read, and we're just going to look at the serial monitor. So here we're able to tell quite some values coming in, and you can clearly see the jitter that's um, present right here, 613, 612. It keeps flying between those things. Um, sometimes the gap might be even a little bit bigger, but it's not really ideal if you want a smooth experience. Now there are some tricks that you could apply to smoothen out a potentiometer. Let me first show you in a sketch and then I'll show you the code. Now let's assume that we receive some values which are going to be 80, 79, um, 75 perhaps even, 82 and 80 and 81. Now the 75 is really a bummer because it will really throw us off on our position um, and it's really jittery and it will keep being jittery on our line as well. So if you use it as throttle, we would see the handle move up and down very rapidly. So when you have a really loud potentiometer with lots of noise, it might be profitable to average out using um, an array. In this array, we're gonna store some elements 
and then we're going to average out to get one result. Now our Arduinos can do this way faster than I can draw, but let's imagine it comes in one at a time. We store each element or each value in an array. We then check how big our array is. So in this case, it has eight elements. So we do the total value divided by eight, which will give us the averaged out number. It's the sum of everything was 639. We divide it by eight and we get this rounded down value of 80. Now, perhaps even if you round it down or if you jitter only consizes of steps of one, so 80, 81, 80, 81, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 81. As an example, averaging might perhaps be a bit over. Now, if you got some light jitter, we could use the absolute function. The absolute function um, will, will return us a positive number no matter if the result is positive or negative. So it will just give us the difference. So we check the value minus the old value and then we make sure that if it's bigger than one, if that is the case, we make sure that the old value will contain the new value to make sure that in the next iteration, we don't check against the old, old value. Perhaps it sounds a bit confusing, but let's take 83 and 81. The difference is bigger than two. So that means that our statement is true. Our old value becomes 83. We wait till a new value comes in. So the 83 becomes 82. Is that bigger than one? In this case, no, it's one. So 85, which is two, the difference. So it's gonna be bigger than one. The old value becomes 85. So if, now that you've visualized logic in our code, it's actually basic, uh, pretty simple. If the new value minus old value is bigger than one, we're gonna save if the new value minus the old value, the absolute value of those is gonna be bigger than one. We're gonna print the value I'm going to save the old value as a new value, exactly like I showed you in the drawing. Now, if we upload this, we'll see that A, the readings don't come in constantly. It only comes in when we change something. And it's quite responsive, smooth, um, and almost no jitter. To make your life easier, I've taken a little bit of a freedom approach to take away the smoothening for you. And I've applied it to the library myself. So if you use something like this, simple input handling, mixture input handling, or the props input handling, and you upload the code. Okay, and now you might wonder why is it jittering? It's because I've defined all these other pins that are open lines, there's nothing connected to them. Um, so that's why you see the jitter on the line. But we can clearly see that there is a lot more going on than just uh, sending the value. Um, so that is just to make the code for you simple and clean by just having to pass the simple input pin. Now I've actually whipped up a new one for you. The flaps pot set pot flaps It's not out yet. It's going to be hopefully tomorrow on Monday. Um, I'm still need to wrap up with some few things. Um, so if we upload this sketch, we can actually see what is going to happen in game as well, because who needs a potential monitor just in the serial monitor, right? Let's have a look. Here we go. So now if we go in game, oh, Calm down. It's because my scroll wheel was on top of it. Oop, here we go. And we're able to control the flaps with our potentiometer. Um, so there are many, many use cases to use a potentiometer. The code is pretty simple. It's just an analog read, some basic smoothing, and then send it towards somewhere. Now, perhaps you don't want to use it as a sliding scale. Um, so you don't want to go from zero to one or two, three. You want to do something else. Let's say if you're in this region, send this command. If in this area, send this command. Well, how could we do this? Let's say, I'm just going to write some pseudocode. Um, value is analog read 200, uh, whoop, A0. Now, if value is smaller than, it goes from zero to one or two, three. So now, I had to stop myself there for a second to explain something that I think is perhaps important. Um, the signal that you see and the values you receive, some zeros from one, oh, two, three, come from the analog read. The values you see aren't the analog signals. Let's take it the other way around. This is something that you might be familiar with. 
which is an audio interface. Streamers use it a lot for um, their mics and their headsets. I use it for my guitars, but it's an DAC or an ADC. Now, what's the difference? An ADC is an analog to digital converter. So it takes the analog signal and converts it to a digital value. In our case, it could be zero to one or two, three. It could be a visual representation, whatever, but it's gonna be digital. Now the other way around, the DAC is perhaps you're a bit more familiar with, or at least you're, that, that you encounter it as such, is gonna be uh, something that converts digital to an analog signal. So let's say sound waves, uh, you've got your Spotify going on, you want it on your hi-fi stereo set, it's gonna be converted from digital to analog. The ADC of an Arduino usually has a 10-bit resolution. This means the value goes from 0 to 1 or 2, 3, like I mentioned before. Um, but other boards might have, like this is a TNZ 4.1. I believe it can go up to 16 bits or 13 bits if you, want, if you want anything that's remotely stable, which will give you a big higher range. So with a 30-bit, you would have a range from 0 to 8191. Now it's a much bigger range but it's also prone to more instabilities and jitter. So in that case, it might be worth it to start smoothing out by averaging or smoothing out at least with the ABS function or something similar that you'll come up with, um, but it's gonna be noisier. So we say 400, we say connector dot send set, I don't know, send, com one ink. I'm not even sure if it's a real command, but you get the drift. It's just an example. We add a little delay. So now as long as it's smaller than 400, it's going to send the com one ink and five times per second. Now, if the value is bigger than 600, we're going to say connector dot send com one decrease. Once again, this is just an example. This code doesn't even work, but you, it's more about the logic behind it. So what will happen now? If the value is bigger than 600, it's gonna send com one, uh, com one ink, and or else it's gonna do delay. Wait, you know what? I'm gonna make this a real code. Give me one second. Basic, uh, it's quite a simple sketch. If it's smaller than 600, bigger than 600, and smaller than 400, so it leaves us a gap in the middle where it won't do anything. Um, let's see if we fire this puppy up. I'm not even sure. I've never flown this plane, so I don't know where the comms are actually. You know what? No. Okay, so here we are. Load it up. And I hope that the moment I Oh, yeah, I know what the problem is. Um, see, even I messed this up, so I need to fix this because it's not very intuitive. Serial.println. Um, it would be more simple. I totally agree with you that to just do this in the back end, not have you type in the serial.println every time. Um, so I'm going to change that. It's not going to be in this update, but I'm going to put it on the board. Um, so here we go. I'm going to put it in the backlog. Omit the serial.print line from code. There we go. Now, test number four. Oh, it is. I just had the wrong radio. Um, we can clearly see that it keeps going up. Now, if I'm correct, there must be a sweet spot. Yeah, here we are. So, I hold in this position, nothing happens. Now, if I move it down, it will keep sending the command to go down. If I move it back, it stops. And this way it goes up. Um, so, this way you're even able to... It's a bit more counterintuitive and it, <laughs> it's a bit hard to find that... Oh, now I'm going down. That sweet spot where it's in the middle. Um, but you see that there are, the possibilities are basically endless as long as your 
code um, facilitates it. So if we want to use it as a button, we can do so. If it range, reaches a certain range, do this. If it reaches a certain range, do that. Um, if you want to sliding scale, zero to one or two, three, we can do that as well. We could just say, if it's zero, we map it to a scale um, and then apply that to the game. So my case, see, so my throttle is basically a potentiometer as well. Um, I think I got the wrong one. Yeah, I, oh no, there it goes. Clearly able to see that it just maps the position of the potentiometer towards the in-game state. So perhaps you learned something, I hope you did. If you didn't, still glad you were here. I want to thank all my Patreon supporters for making this content possible. You guys rock. I'm going to get out of here. I haven't really tested the new update yet, except for a very short flight. So I hope to see you in the next one.